Welcome to St. Timothy. On this uh, Palm and Passion Sunday, we always begin outside in our parking lot and uh, process into the church, remembering how Jesus also went into the city of Jerusalem. We enter into Jerusalem with Jesus and begin this Holy Week. I have with me here just a little cutting of a calla lily, and if you have some greenery with you, you can also uh, bring that out at this time as your way of remembering um, how the people cut down branches and put them before Jesus to give praise to him. Let us begin. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest hand. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you. And immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Behold, the Son of David. Behold, the Lamb of our salvation. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you came to us as our servant to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in the obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ and live into the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's time for the children's word. Do you have a little branch or leaf with you there at home? I got this one here at the church, just cut it from one of the calla lilies. The people in the story we just heard cut branches as, uh, like this as a way to show their welcome and praise to Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem. They had such wonderful things. They had heard such wonderful things about him and they wanted to give him thanks and praise. So today, we also wave our branches in praise of Jesus. I know we're all spending a lot of time at home right now, so I wanted to ask what you might be able to do at home to praise Jesus. Do you have any ideas? Maybe you could sing a song, or uh, maybe you could uh, sing even a song with someone else. What about drawing a picture? That would be a good way to praise Jesus. Or maybe you could even draw a picture of a palm tree since it's Palm Sunday. Or maybe you could write a little note um, or even put a picture in your note and, and send it to uh, someone you know or a member of the church. They would love to receive a note from you. Um, my next door neighbors did something really fun this week. They went outside in front of their house on the sidewalk and they drew all these pictures and they had messages with them just to cheer up people in the neighborhood as they walked by. I think all of these kinds of ideas are great ways that we can give praise to Jesus because we can praise him by sharing our joy and care with each other, with everyone we know. And I bet you can even think of some more ways too. I hope that you find some really great ways to share your joy and caring and praise God every day.
It is my tradition to just offer an introduction to the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ rather than a full sermon, and then let the gospel narrative speak for itself. I think the passion actually has quite a bit to say to us this year. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. This is how Matthew begins the Passion narrative. I hear these words, and all I can think is, how did it come to this? How did G Judas, who followed Jesus for years, come to believe that he should betray Jesus? After all that Jesus had done in his presence and taught him, how did he get there? And by the end of the story, when the women saw Joseph of Arimathea put Jesus' body in the tomb, all we can do is stand there with him, with them, and wonder, how did we get here? I've been asking that question of myself a lot lately, and I've come to understand that it's an expression of grief as we face our own global tragedy i hear the sorrow of the passion so clearly this year there is such a deep feeling of loss a loss that we all know in our lives in this moment and in so many other losses how did we get here how did we get here We bear this sorrow as we hear the passion. And maybe we can feel more deeply how Jesus suffered and how God truly grieves with us. One last thing to keep in mind. Jesus' terrible death was no natural disaster, but the result of human hatred and fear. We can hear that vitriol when the, crowds, when the crowd yells, His blood be on us and on our children. This line was used by Christians to justify the persecution and killing of Jews. How they completely missed the point. Indeed, Matthew puts us in the crowd. We are all capable and guilty of acting out of fear, prejudice, and hatred in one way or another. But we miss the point in another way, in the irony of what Matthew records. In biblical language, blood is a sign of life and it is sacred. The ironic shout of the crowd is, in fact, what God gives us through Christ crucified. Life. Christ gives us life now and always, even, or maybe especially, in our present time of sorrow and suffering. So now, let us hear. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, 
Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the, to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now, the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none though many witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God, Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, 
From now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up to, and said to Peter, Certainly, you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Ju Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood, to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me.
Now Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, At the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Peter When Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head, After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him.
as they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee.
when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness in our time. By your Spirit, 
give us words of joy and peace to share with an anxious world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, in the beauty of this spring, may we see you in all this world we are part of. Inspire us to protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Prosper the work of those who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, drive away fear and anxiety that cause strife between nations and grant wisdom to leaders who guide us through this time of pandemic. May we all work to protect the vulnerable. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded, comfort the dying, bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief, especially David, Laura, the family and friends of Joe Vargo, the family and friends of Laura Cook Thomas, the family and friends of Joe Miller and all those that we now name silently or aloud. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, prepare us for this Holy Week. Show us how to die to self, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. <laughs>